Hi everybody, it's Don Gianetti, lighting-essentials.com and project52prosystem.com. Uh, a couple weeks ago I took a trip out to the desert and I just wanted to share a few images with you. This is not a um, how I shot it video, so um, we're not going to talk a whole lot about gear and stuff, but we will talk a little bit about it because I think that uh, some discussion is warranted. Um, I had a lot of fun. I love the desert in the winter. I I don't know why. Uh, I was born and raised in the desert here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I, um, I just have a real affinity for it. Uh, Got to admit that in the summertime, the Anza Borrego Desert is a very inhospitable place. Uh, usually it's inhospitable in most times of the year, but this time we had wildflowers. Now, this was not a super bloom, but it was pretty incredible. This first view here is a, a shot of the Carrizo Badlands from the Carrizo Badlands Overview. And that's on a road that goes from Ocotillo, California, right there on Highway 8, just west of El Centro, uh, up to Julian, uh, California, uh, which is up in the mountains. It's really beautiful up there. But it goes through the Anza Borrego Desert. And a few miles out of, outside of Ocotillo, you're going to come across a place where you can pull off uh, and walk out on this little point here to see the Carrizo Badlands. They are amazing. Lots of color there. Certain times of the day, evening, it's really, really colorful. Midday, it's very flat uh, as you would expect it to be. But uh, this was uh, fairly early in the morning and I really, really was fascinated by these these shapes of the rocks and the the composition that this little hill gave me here. This is a combination of three shots done on a 35 millimeter PC lens for uh, Nikon. It's my Nikon DF. It's an old, old lens. It was used when I bought it in 1977. Uh, so it uh, it's, it's a manual everything lens, even to the point where it doesn't really have any sort of uh, uh, aperture. You actually close the aperture manually with your hand. So you focus wide open, uh, then you close the man the aperture with this little ring and it takes the shot. That's it. There's no nothing in the lens at all uh, as far as a aperture or, or a shutter of any kind. So I basically set the camera up here. I did one to the left, one in the middle, one to the right, processed it in Lightroom. I just really thought this all this color was beautiful. Doesn't happen much in the desert. This is a red ocotillo. Uh, this time of year, because of the water, we have all the flowers again. This take, is taken right uh, to the right of me where I was standing for the previous shot. Uh, and this is also a, a uh, combination of three shots on the 35 millimeter. Uh, this time I did it vertically and put it together. So this is a, about a 120 megabyte file. 110 or something like that. It's very sharp. I am going to make a large print of it. I don't usually make large prints. I'm not a large print photographer. I Most of my prints that I ever make for myself are in the 6x9 range. So I'm not really I'm not really interested in big giant prints at all. I uh I think they're really cool on other photographers, but not for my work. I like a very much more intimate look. But I'm just fascinated by all this color out here. Once again, I've been here on Zabrego probably a dozen times. I'm fascinated by the desert. Uh, and this kind of, I don't know if you can see this, there's like nothing growing over here. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Uh, and then to have all this color here. Uh, is very unusual. Usually there's some little brown nothing here, but uh, I thought it was really pretty, so I, I snapped it. This is a shot taken from, uh, from the ridge there over towards the Badlands, and you can see it curving back here. There's a road down there, I'm told. Um, I'm going to take that road someday. Probably not on my motorcycle since my motorcycle probably is the wrong kind of motorcycle to go down 
that road. But you can uh, feel the sun is getting a little higher, it's getting a little flatter, but we still have some good definitions in those hills here. I really thought it was fascinating. One last panoramic here taken from that spot and you can see this giant mountain coming down into the the badlands here which stretch for about they go off there about 10 miles of literally the most craggy um, snarled up uh, hills and mountains you've you've could, could run across. I mean, it's really, really amazing. Uh, Death Valley is a big place and it's a very famous place and it's, it gets a lot of press and it's a fascinating, beautiful, beautiful place. Anza Borrego isn't near the size of Death Valley, but it has so much of the same interest of Death Valley crammed into a very small space. Uh, the Anza Borrego Desert is uh, west of El Centro, as I said, it's east of Julian and, and the mountains there. It's south of Palm Springs. It's west of the Salton Sea. So uh, if you're looking for it, you look for the town of Brego Springs, which, uh, by the way, has a couple of good restaurants with some amazing food. Um, Bra Brago Springs would be uh, one place where you could set as a destination. It's not far. It's only 30 miles from Julian. So Julian's up in the mountains. It's cool. It snows up there and you can have a great time. And you can be down to Borrego Springs in, you know, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. It is, it's a, a curvy edge of the mountain, hold on to the seat of your pants road, but it's absolutely stunning. One of the things that I've always been uh, attract to, attracted to in photographing this stuff, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't consider myself a landscape photographer. Um, I I started out shooting landscapes. I went away from it from 45 for 40 plus years, uh, shooting mostly only commercial. But now that I'm shooting for myself, I'm I'm finding an interest in photographing um, certain certain things. And and one of the things that caught my eye on the on this trip was this normally absolutely devastatingly dry cliff that's uh, visible from the road um, as you're as you're going uh, south on the on the road from uh, Julian uh, it, and I, I've always been fascinated by it but to see it with the color on it and it just pulled out these to me just pulled out these edges so nicely here there's no sky there's no base it's a uh, it's a, a sort of an abstract of the side of a mountain. How big is this? It's hard to tell, isn't it? It's really hard to tell how big this is, but that's a full-size Ocotillo. So if that's a full-size Ocotillo, that's about uh, six or eight feet tall. So it's this vast, vast edge of a mountain that's usually absolutely dead, has nothing on it. I, uh, I went ahead and went on into uh, Borrego Springs, as I said, and, and had a, a delicious meal. And uh, by this this time, it warmed up to about 85 degrees. It's pretty cool. Uh, the sun was a little too high in the in the sky for for great landscape photography. So I uh, I did a little writing in the shade, and I got in the car and I headed towards the Salton Sea on a road that I had not been on before. So this is uh, this is going east from Borrego Springs, and I found this little trailer, uh, which I thought was fascinating. And those are uh, those mountains are also equally fascinating to me they are so rough and rugged uh, I dare say it would be uh, an adventure for anyone to climb those mountains as you can see once you're up top there's pine trees up there uh, we're looking if you were to go due west from here you'd end up over towards Ramona California if you want to uh, think about that on the map but I was fascinated again by the by just the, the the sheer size of the mountain and this and the sky is always cool. There's a a uh, dried lake bed that I uh, I was was uh, also taken with uh, out here. You can see it out here. This the dry lake bed and I put together uh, three shots again from the 35 uh, PC because the, I loved the way these Ocotillos were just sort of positioned here, almost like centuries guarding this. Uh, the red 
flowery blooming flowers and you can see the yellow into the into the distance uh, again you know so unusual that it, it just gave color to to a, a place that I've rarely seen color in so it was pretty pretty interesting the flat light when I'm shooting the desert like this the flat light doesn't really bother me because the desert is flat light the desert when you're in it it, it kind of has that feeling to it and I I don't I don't oppose it I I, I love to shoot at dawn I love to shoot it at, at dusk absolutely uh, but I don't really hesitate sometimes to shoot a shot in bright sun of the desert because the light is flat and oppressive and the desert can be that way as well the towards the Salton Sea we get into these badlands and that's quite a deep canyon uh, and then there's one there, and then there's one there, then there's one there, and there's one there. I think you get the drift. Uh, this side of this uh, mountain here is really, really treacherous. Um, but even here, we have wildflowers. Even here in this really, I mean, desolate part of the desert. Rock, stone, and these little bitty bushes that never do much of anything but they're colorful now and we have these little flowers up here I just love it out in the distance you can see the Salton Sea everything leading down to that big valley I got down to the Salton Sea uh, after my uh, desert sojourn and uh, interestingly found another desert uh, you can see that the, where I'm standing here used to be a parking lot of a very fancy or uh, very uh, upscale hotel uh, you can still see the the, the foundations for it and uh, the palm trees of course long since died the water is receding way way back there it's got to be at least a half mile out there but uh, I thought it was a, a fascinating composition these these two reaching into the sky and the one that's that's already fallen and a little bit down the beach this lone pine tree uh, just jutting up here and and of course the 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 tracks of of man uh, one of the things when I'm shooting the natural world I'm always looking for something of mankind now in, in uh, the previous shots were pretty much not that way uh, but this shot is exactly what I look for I'm always looking for car tracks or uh, signs that, that people have been there if I'm going to shoot the natural world it's just part of my thing I'm not a wilderness shooter uh, I don't pretend to be I don't really want to be I like what doing what I do which is to record how man uh, reacts with the environment so again this used to be a fancy parking lot with a beach and a big pier and everything so so anyway I spent some time there the uh, I think the interesting thing photographically is uh, uh, the lens choice I took with me my normal kit, 28, 35, 50, 85, 180. Uh, and I also took my, I just bought a 24 to 120 zoom because I shot on Canon, I shoot the 24 to 105 and really love that focal length. Usually when I go out to shoot, I take 28 to, 10, to the 85, that's about it. Uh, this time I shot all 50, all these, uh, this is the 50, that's the 50, 50, 50, 50, and 50. The panoramics were done with the uh, 35. Uh, and um, I, so I basically shot the entire three days on the 50 and really, really enjoyed it. So it has a focal length that sort of speaks to me. And I'll just have to see uh, uh, going forward. Uh, how much more I use it. I, I think it's probably going to be on my camera an awful lot. I really like that uh, intimate uh, approach that it, it gives me, intimate feel to the photographs. Listen, if you like my channel here, we do a lot of things. We talk about business, we talk about motivation, we talk about photography, studio photography. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of stuff here on my photography, but I will and I'm going to start to because so many people have asked me, Don, show us your stuff. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, I usually like building up my students from Project 52.
Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you like it, hit the subscribe button and then that bell, and I'll just annoy the hell out of you with, uh, when I put stuff up and uh, your little bell will ring and, uh, you know, wake the cat. Anyway, have a great one. I'll see you next time.